just came so out. Mix it a little bit. It's so okay. cool just watching it like flow out. Oh, oh my god. It's like melting into a warm. It's yeah. like from this little yeah. tablet. It's from this little tablet. And then it turns into that. Oh, it just turns. Welcome back to Too Cool for Middle School. I have a really exciting video for you today because we're going to veer into non-English and history content territory today. <laughs> but I have a couple of ideas for interactive lessons that you could do in a bunch of different content areas. Some of them apply to history and English and I use them in my classes. Others apply to all content areas and we even have a little math and science today. The last portion of today's video is sponsored by Mel Science, and so we're gonna get into this little kit over here. It's very exciting because we have a giveaway to talk about and a discount code for you to use. So stick around to the end of the video to hear all about the giveaway and the discount codes. But in the meantime, we're gonna talk about five of my favorite interactive lessons to use in the classroom. So the first thing I like to do to get my students interacting with the content is to have them do skits. Very simple idea, I know, but they just work like magic. We did some skits with my sixth grade history students um, like last week and this week. The skit had a lot of characters, so I just split my class into two different groups and had them each perform. So you got to perform the skit once and then like watch the skit once. I gave them rehearsal time in class. We had a director, we had people in charge of props, we had all of the different roles in the skit. So you definitely have to plan ahead a little bit and make sure that everybody has a job, everybody has a role, everybody feels responsible for something. But especially with middle school students like mine, they get really into a skit and being silly. If there are any like kind of weird parts where something kind of funny happens, like in our skit it says like children run by laughing. So they spent the most time practicing children running by laughing. I also have my students write their own skits. So we do skits about the different Mesopotamian empires and they get to include like battles and leaders and assassinations and laws and people breaking the laws and all kinds of stuff. So those skits always turn out really good as well. So the second strategy that I really like is a tableau. This is similar to a skit, but you don't need dialogue or movement. So your students would still work in groups and they would just create a scene of some kind and they would just stand very purposefully in a very particular way uh, to convey whatever message they're trying to show. So this is definitely useful in history. You could convey some kind of moment in history and your students are each like a different uh, character or person. Maybe one kid is like a tree and one kid is a river or whatever. <laughs> It definitely takes some thought on their part and they have to be really clear about what they're doing so that the audience, like whoever's looking at it, understands what they're trying to show. And you could use this in science also. You could show some kind of a system or I'm thinking kind of like earth science, like maybe showing something with like plate tectonics or weather or anything like that where you've got like multiple pieces in a particular place. You could even do it with like diagramming sentences, like different students could be like different punctuation marks or different parts of speech. You can do all kinds of things. And now that we have cameras on like all of our devices, most of my students have a phone, they all have a Chromebook. You could also um, have your students like take a picture of their tableau and then like write a summary underneath it or do something where they add some kind of like a little description to what everything is. And then you could like post those in your classroom. Now the third idea that I have for you is specifically for math, specifically for geometry. I have never taught math in my life. I don't know that I'd be very good at it, but in one of my credential classes, we were talking about stuff like this, like different strategies to get students involved in the content, make sure that things were hands-on. And I still remember this activity like 10 years later. Okay, so this was for a lesson about triangles and all you would need is some pieces of string tied together. And you would put your students in pairs and then you would have them use the string to show you the different types of triangles. So for example, you could say like right angle. And this works better if you have two people so they can like each hold a piece of it. But your students would hold up their string and show you that they know what a right triangle is. So this is a really great way to like just do a visual assessment, see if everybody gets it because 
you know what their triangle should look like. And then you can call out a different type of triangle. You could do like ob obtuse, am I getting it? Or maybe have them do an equilateral. Ugh, I can't get an equilateral with my fingers. But you get the idea. So this is something very cheap, very easy to do, interactive, fun, and really helps those terms and ideas and the visual of what the triangle looks like to really stick in their mind. There's probably more that you could like build upon on this little activity. If you're a math teacher, you would know better than me, but yay, a little math content on my channel. Probably not gonna happen again for a while. <laughs> Okay, the fourth idea, I love these. I love to have students make a parody song about something. So again, this could work in any content area. The example that I have is when I was teaching eighth grade US history and we learned about the American Revolution and the United States like breaking up with England and writing the Declaration of Independence, which is basically a breakup letter to King George. I would have them find any breakup song that you know was on the radio, any breakup song that they liked, and then they would change the words so that it was about the American Revolution. These always turned out so hilarious. So I would have them turn in the lyrics to me so that I would like have that to kind of grade and like see how much content they got in there. And then the great thing now is that you can find pretty much any song, just find the instrumental version of it on YouTube, and then you can have your students perform so they can bring up their lyrics to the front of the class and they can perform their parody song. If you don't wanna have them perform in class, they could always make a video of it and you could just like show the videos or they can send it to you or whatever, but these always end up so great. Again, you could do this in almost any content area and students get really creative if they're allowed to pick the song that they like. And even if, you know, it's a song that has like explicit language in it, they can just switch that out and they get like even more motivated to do it if they get to use a song with bad words. At least in middle school, that's how it goes. So parody songs are another one of my favorite ways for students to kind of summarize and re-explain something that they've learned. Okay, we are on to lesson number five, and this is where we get to talk about science. My dad was a seventh grade science teacher for many, many years. He was my seventh grade science teacher. Let me just say, in seventh grade, we did the reproductive system, so I did the reproductive system with all my friends, the guy I had a crush on, all my girls, and my dad when I was 12. Really fun. I'm a little bit scarred for life after that. So of course, if you're a science teacher, this would be great. These subscription boxes are monthly and they already come with everything that you would need to do an experiment. They start at under $35 a month and I'm gonna tell you a little bit later how to get a discount or how to maybe get some free boxes. I get questions from parents all the time about like ways to supplement the curriculum that they're already getting at school and this is a really really fun way to supplement the science curriculum that your kids are doing so let me show you everything that comes in here i think this is so cool so this is a vr headset that you can use with your phone so there's an app that goes with this and you can download the app to get some help with conducting all of the experiments let me show you what comes in the starter kit so first of all you get this booklet and this describes everything that you need to know. I mean, this is great. How to act in the chemistry laboratory. Do not act a fool in the chemistry laboratory. Frequently asked questions. Everything you need to know is in this little booklet. Here you get a tray. And then let me just show you everything that comes in here. So then each month you get different kits like this and you can use all the things in that basic starter kit to do a new experiment every month. And then inside, you have two different experiments to do. And you should definitely follow Mel Science on Instagram because they show little videos of the experiments so then you know what it should like and you know what to expect. So these are not like scary chemicals. This is just like those naturally occurring chemicals that if you know how to put them together in the right way, you can get cool chemical reactions out of them. So that's what gets kids interested in chemistry. You start to realize that if you know just a little bit about how different chemicals interact with each other, you can make them do really cool stuff. Okay, so the other one is a foam eruption. Foam erupts out of the flask like real lava. And then in addition to the starter kit that you have, here are all these exciting little chemicals, liquid soap, you've got some gloves, little stirrers, everything you need to measure. Doing these in your chemistry class or your science class 
when you're teaching about hydrogen or whatever is so much more exciting for your kids than just doing the equations or like just writing stuff out on the board. And the hard work of collecting everything and getting all of the supplies is done for you. So this is really, really cool. I know that my students would love this. This is like middle school science dream. Okay, so thank you so much to my volunteers, Hannah and Anel. We are going to try out both of these chemistry experiments. So let's open up the box, see what we have here. You guys start looking through this. I'm gonna get the, um, the app on my phone. Okay. Oh wait, no, this is for the Solid we need fuel? this little thing. Oh, so this thingy. Oh wait, so it's color. Okay. For sure it's the right chemicals? <laughs> that one, yes. some more stuff from here. Yes. Yes, so right, we so need, where, where's the, there's a cup? Watching it like flow out. Because watching it flow out is like so cool. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. 
So if you're thinking that this would be a good thing for like your school and your science department, I'm gonna leave some information below where you can get 10 to 15% off of your order depending on how many months you wanna order for if you do it through like a school purchase order. You will definitely be like the favorite science teacher on campus if you're doing this stuff in your classroom. If you're just looking to get this for yourself, for your own class or your own kids, or maybe you run like an after school science club or something like that and you just need one per month, I have a promotion code for 25% of the first order in your subscription. And even better, I'm also doing a giveaway with Mel Chemistry where you can win a free three month subscription. So all you have to do is leave a comment below telling us one of your favorite interactive strategies for the classroom and use the hashtag raise smart because we're trying to raise smart kids and hashtag Mel science. They're gonna read through all of the comments and pick the most interesting tip and the author of that tip is going to win that three month free subscription. This giveaway is gonna close on Friday, September 20th. So if you're not a science teacher but you know somebody else who would love to enter this giveaway and get this subscription box, share this video with them so they have enough time to enter the giveaway as well. If you're the winner, we will reply to your comment, so just make sure you're checking back in on YouTube and we'll get a hold of you and send you a free three month subscription. So best of luck with the giveaway and I hope that no matter what content area you teach, you got a couple of ideas either from me or just from the comment section about how to really engage your students and do some interactive lessons, those ones that they're gonna remember years from now when they're an adult and they're like, remember when we were in Mrs. Forbes class and we did this? And it motivates them to keep learning and just stay fascinated in this world that we live in. So thank you again to Mel Science, Mel Chemistry for sponsoring this video and sponsoring the giveaway for you amazing science teachers out there. Thank you for watching and sharing this video and I will see you next time. Bye.